In this video, we're going to learn how to multiply fractions and whole numbers. Let's begin. Step one, if there is a whole number, make it a fraction by putting it over the number one. So let's look at number one over here. Uh, there are no whole numbers, so we can skip step one. Step two, cross cancel if possible. Well, uh, we can't cross cancel, and I'll explain more about that uh, in a moment. Step three, multiply straight across. So what that means is that we are going to multiply two and six, which is 12, and then five and seven, which is 35. So you're multiplying numbers straight across from each other, two and six, the numerators, and then multiply the denominators, five and seven. Notice that unlike adding and subtracting, you do not need to have a common denominator. You just multiply across. And finally, you simplify, which means we reduce or change improper fractions to mixed numbers. And in this case, um, it is a proper fraction because the numerator is smaller than the denominator, and um, you can't reduce it at all. So that's our final answer. You box it. Let's take a look at uh, some other numbers. Now, you'll notice that we have 2a, 2b, 3a, 3b. And what this, uh, the reason we have this is because they are the same exact problem, and we're going to do them in two different ways. So um, I'm going to do it without cross-canceling and with cross-canceling. So let's try it, the first one without cross-canceling. Uh, step one, if there's a whole number, make it fraction by putting it over the number one. So we can't multiply with a whole number or a mixed number. So we need to turn 15 into a fraction, and 15 as a fraction is just 15 over 1. Uh, step 2, cross-cancel if possible. Well, we're not going to do this with cross-canceling. Uh, we're just going to multiply straight across. Go sta straight to uh, step 3, so multiply straight across. And uh, 15 times 2 is uh, 30, and 1 times 3 is 3. Now we simplify. 30 divided by 3, or can be uh, reduced, uh, divide them both by 3, or you can just say 30 divided by 3, which is 10. Um, yeah, and that is our answer. Now with cross-canceling, um, we still do the first step, which is make it 15 over 1. Uh, cross-canceling, what that means is cross-canceling is reducing it before you multiply. So in 2a, what we did was we just multiplied these two numbers, 15 times 2 and 1 times 3. And then we ended up reducing it afterwards. So 30 over 3, well, you reduce it by 3. You divide them both by 3, and you end up with 10 over 1, which is 10. Um, what you can do with cross-canceling is you can reduce. So can we reduce 15 over 1? Uh, no. What about 2 over 3? No. But cross-canceling, uh, the rules of cross-canceling allow us to reduce uh, numbers that are diagonal from each other as well. So 15 and 3 can be reduced. Or if 1 and 2 are possible, then you can reduce those as well, but uh, it's not. So let's cross cancel 15 and 3, or cross 15 and 3 off. And what can you, can you reduce them both by? Well, we can divide them both by 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that's all you can do. Now we go straight to step 3, which is multiply straight across. 5 times 2 is 10, and 1 times 1 is 1. And 10 over 1 is just 10. Now, you may be thinking, why did we cross-cancel? That seems kind of confusing. Well, um, it could be. If it's more confusing to you, then definitely just do uh, multiply without cross-canceling. But uh, cross-canceling actually can save us some time. And you'll see in question 3a and 3b. So 3a, we have 4 over 7 times 14 over 24. Well, I'm not going to cross-cancel. I'm just going to go straight to step three, which is multiply across. Four times 14, which is, well, that's uh, 56. And seven times 24. Now, if you didn't have a calculator, you'd have to multiply that out, and you should end up getting 168. Now, 56 over 168, you can reduce that. Uh, they're both even, so let's divide them both by two. And 56 divided by two is um, 28, and 168 divided by two is uh, 80, 84. All right, we can reduce it further because they're both even, so divide them both by 2. Uh, 28 divided by 2 is 14, and 84 divided by 2 is 42. All right, we can reduce some more uh, because they're both even, so let's divide by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 42 divided by 2 is um, 20, 21. And, uh, well, they're not both even, but you can still reduce it because they're both divisible by 7. So divide them both by 7, and you end up with 1 over 3. So 
uh, I'm just reducing again and again and again and again until I get my final answer. Let's try this problem, uh, three, with cross-canceling. So remember the rule is you can cross-cancel numbers that are diagonal from each other, like 4 and 24 and 7 and 14, as well as numbers on top of each other. I cannot cross-cancel numbers beside each other, across from each other, like 4 and 14 or 7 and 24. Only diagonal, sorry, diagonal, and right above and below. So can we cross cancel 4 and 24, 4 and 7? Well, yeah, you can divide both 4 and 24 by um, 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 24 divided by 4 is 6. Um, can we cross cancel anything else? Well, 7 and 14 can both be divided by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Uh, we can actually cross cancel some more if uh, we find some numbers. Well, let's see, 2 and 6, they can both be reduced by 2. Divide them both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. And remember, you can cross cancel numbers diagonally and right above and below each other, which is why I was able to cross cancel that. So uh, I can't cross cancel anymore. So let's just multiply our numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, and that's our answer. So as you can see, cross-canceling allows us to reduce before we multiply that out, and it may seem like the same amount of work, but one of the difficulties of not cross-canceling is you end up with big numbers, and big numbers can sometimes be difficult to reduce, whereas before you multiply them out and before you get before these numbers get big, you can reduce them and make them smaller. That way you don't have to deal with big numbers like 56 over 168. All right, let's try number... Um, so cross-canceling at the beginning makes reducing at the end much easier. So let's try 4a and 4b. Let's see what it looks like without cross-canceling. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20, and you can divide both of them by 4. So our final answer is 1 over 5. Let's try that with cross-canceling. Let's see. Uh, 4 and 4 are diagonal from each other. You can divide them both by 4, uh, uh, which gets you 1 and 1. And now we multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5, and that is our final answer. Uh, you do not have to cross cancel. I use both methods. This sometimes doing it without cross canceling is easier, and sometimes doing it with cross canceling makes it easier. Do whatever suits you. If you find cross canceling confusing, you don't have to do it. All right, let's try number five. Remember, step one is to um, turn whole numbers into a fraction by putting a one over it because you cannot multiply with a whole number. So, Next, we cross-cancel if we can. Let's see, 8 and 12 can be cross-canceled. Yep, you can divide them both by 4. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I don't think we can cross-cancel anymore, so we just multiply straight across. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 3 is 3. We're not done there because this is an improper fraction. So 10 divided by 3. Let's do some work on the side. 3 goes into 10 3 times. So 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract 9. We end up with 1. So we turn that into a fraction, 3 and 1 third. And that is going to be our final answer, 3 and 1 third. Try number 6. We have 4 tenths times 2 sixths. Um, can we cross cancel? Yes, we can. We can cross cancel 4 and 10, divide them both by 2, or we can do 4 and 6, which is... Uh, what I did, divide both 4 and 6 by 2, and you're going to get 2, and uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And let's see, any more cross-canceling? Well, 10 and 2, or 10 and 2 up there, either one's going to work. I decided to go diagonally. Divide them both by 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Any other cross-canceling? 2 and 3, 5 and 1. Nope, so we multiply straight across. 2 times 1 is 2. 5 times 3 is 15, and that is a proper fraction. It's completely reduced, so that's our final answer. Let's try number... Oh, actually, that's it. <laughs> Go ahead and try some problems on your own. Good luck.